Welcome to Dr. Piercy's Introduction to the MVC Design Model for Web Applications. In this video, we'll review the components of an MVC-based web application, and you'll understand how Java server pages and servlets work together with Java classes to handle an application use case. Once again, we see here our MVC component model. In our studies, we have worked with HTML to provide structure on the client side. We learned CSS to provide style and do some aesthetics on the client side. We also delved a little bit into JavaScript for behavior, but not as much as we're going to later. From the client side, we somehow submit a request that goes to the web server. We first learned that the web server can incorporate some Java classes, and we saw how we can cause these to run using JSPs. In our study of JSP, we saw how JSP can be useful as both the controller and the view, but hopefully you also saw that it's better at the view than it is at working with the controller aspect of an application. More recently, we studied servlets. And again, we studied servlets as both a controller and a view, much like we studied JSPs. We saw that it can handle both the controller aspect and the view aspect of a use case, but opposite to the JSP, the servlet is better at the controller concerns than the view. In this video, we're turning our attention to the MVC design pattern where we put these things together, where we put the servlet in its proper place at handling the controller, and our views we will handle using the JSPs. Once we're done examining the MVC design pattern, we're going to start looking at how we can connect our application to a database. And then after that, we'll be moving back to the client side to learn a little bit more JavaScript. So now let's get started looking at the MVC design pattern. We're going to use several components. First, we'll use JSPs. These are generally used as the view component in an MVC application. But as we saw before, they can be used as the controller component if desired, just they don't do that so well. Servlets are generally used as the controller component in an MVC application, but they can be used to generate the view if desired. And we saw that that was messy with all the print line statements that we had to add to incorporate HTML and content into the view. A much better pattern is to use these together with JSPs handling the view, servlets handling the controller aspect, and Java classes to do most of the work and to model the different business objects we might need in our program. So with an MVC application, the request will come from the client to the web server, which will fire up the application and pass the request on to the servlet. In the servlet, we'll have our logic that determines what assets are needed and what needs to occur. The servlet may need to use some classes from the model. Once the servlet has decided what to do, it will pass control over to one of possibly several JSPs. We'll see this in action in our guessing game application. Once the JSP has control, it may use some Java classes to help it out, but it's basically responsible for generating the response for generating the HTML and adding dynamic content based on the logic in our controller and our model. As we saw before, two objects are created immediately upon receiving the request by the web server. The request object arrives holding information pertaining to the request. It's mostly used by the controller, but as we saw before, it's accessible by both the controller and the view as needed. A response object is also created. The primary responsibility for adding to the response are the JSPs in the view. But as we saw, it's also available in the controller. We'll see that most of the time we won't need to use the response in the controller, but we might need to use the request in both of these, especially if we're accessing some of the input parameters in either of those components. So both the request and the response objects are available for both our JSPs and servlets to use. We'll see that the servlet will primarily work with the request namely getting the values off the request object and other information that's needed and using those values to determine what needs to happen. The JSP will be primarily concerned with generating the response 
We will, however, sometimes access requests, especially parameters, inside of a JSP file. Remember, there is no persistence. What this means is each time a request comes into the server, a new request and response object are created. The old ones are deleted as soon as the response is sent from the web server. So any data that happens during this cycle of going from request, controller, view to response is lost unless we do something special. In our current examples, we're using hidden text boxes to send the values back to the client and then return to the server at each pass. In later lessons, we'll learn how to handle state or persist data with much better techniques. For more information about the concepts discussed in this video, please visit the references shown here. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. Background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy production.